Hi Hello. everybody, so we're just at the end of the week here in Davos and Lima's leaving first thing tomorrow morning and we were just having an informal chat and Lima started talking about AI. So I asked if I could just turn the cameras on and he could just have a chat with me about AI and quantum computing because what he was saying was so, so interesting and I really wanted you guys to hear it. He's very kindly, despite being tired and passed from pillar to post and talking to a million different people, he so kindly agreed just to have a very quick on-camera chat. So Lima, thank you so much again. Um, as I said there, we're just getting to the end now and you have to shoot off, but you were touching on AI. What, you said that um, some people have, that there are some misunderstandings. Can you talk about that? Yes, and I am tired, but I always like to talk to you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so yes, I think that in both, both AI and quantum computers, people are, under, uh, are overhyping both the, the threat and the promise and in many ways underhyping both the threat and the promise. Okay. And I would say also that it's even bigger for AI than it is for quantum computers. That the, the threat and the promise for quantum computers are cool, the threat and the, quantum, and the promise for AI is even greater. And so it's amazing, in the midst of all this excess hype, the truth is even more maybe fundamental. It's just amazing how that all works. Yes. Um, so is an AI gonna become intelligent and take over the world and kill us all and be the Terminator? I, I don't see that right now. Um, is AI going to change the nature of our jobs? Yes, and faster than you think. Okay, in what ways? So we, a typical assembly line has people doing a thousand different tasks that honestly they do better than robots. And we're gonna go from robots being able to do zero of those better than humans to all of them in a year or two. I mean, I mean that quickly. That quickly. So take the Tesla bot. It's not the only robot in the world. Right now, it is so primitive, it isn't even as good as Boston Dynamics. It shuffles along, and it is going to be vastly better in almost no time, because humans don't write the programs. They have built a system that's end-to-end -end neural networks learning from watching. And they can learn from simulation. They can just do trial and error millions of times in a simulated world and get really good at it. And for many years in the labs, we've been doing this where simulated reinforcement learning systems learn how to walk and learn how to do complicated tasks and learn how to use Rubik's Cubes. People have demonstrated all this. And now we have the Tesla bot with a company that has one of the world's largest supercomputer AI training systems and they have the software set up to do end-to-end -end neural networks with reinforcement learning. This primitive robot that shuffles along and can barely do anything is going to go from, do, from doing nothing to doing everything like that. And you're saying it's going to be able to learn by just watching? Oh, you could just yeah. show it how to fold a shirt or build exactly. a house or whatever. Exactly. And then it fines tunes in simulation. And then it fine fine tunes by actually going out and doing it. If you have millions of them sending their information back to headquarters, they can share with each other. And each one is learning by doing and teaching all the others as it does. Oh, this is fast. This is going to do amazing things. Wow. And can, so presumably then they could start teaching each other as well. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, yes. so it isn't just one teaching all the others. It's all the others teaching all the others. Exactly. The Tesla cars are just proving the way. Each Tesla car is recording what it's doing and all the others are learning from its experience. How do they know? It's a bit like gossip protocol in a way. It's a bit like gossip. How, it's more centralized. Yes. But how do they know the information they're sharing is the right way to do something. Good question. Well, I saw an ex a situation, I did something and it didn't crash, so I guess it was good. And you can do other things too. There are ways of having even AIs learn how what good situations look like. And then you can start saying, I've watched lots of human drivers doing things, I apply these uh, metrics to them, and the AI itself figures out which humans to learn from and which ones not to learn from. And so it's reinforcement learning. Wow. And you, you, you believe this is going to happen in the next couple of years? Oh, yeah. So I think the speed is going to be faster than people understand. People are worried about AGI and ASI. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm less worried about that. I think it's going to happen slower than you're imagining. Computers that actually understand what they're saying, that's going to be much slower than you're thinking. A computer that can do all those little fiddly things on an assembly line, it's going to happen faster than you're thinking. I have no idea how many people in the world are employed to do those tasks. So what are, what are, we, what are we as a, as a planet are going to do? What are the, particularly entry level uh, jobs and uh, what are we gonna do in two or three years time when there's these robots that can do it 
without sleep, without unions, without toilet breaks, etc. I understand. Um, so just a couple of years ago, I heard of a robot that could finally uh, sew with cloth. And cloth is stretchy and nonlinear and very complicated. It's hard to do that. And they had then created robots that now could do what you do in a sweatshop in a less developed country. And those people are horribly mistreated in those sweatshops. But now they're going to be unemployed? <laughs> okay, yeah. uh, that, that doesn't sound good either. Um, but this is coming, and you, you can't stamp it out. Uh, the, the magic ingredients that Hesla is using, I just use them as an example. Yeah, of course. There's going to be a hundred and then a thousand companies doing the exact same thing. And, and the cat's out of the bag. The, the technology for it is very simple. You, you, can't, you can't regulate it. You can't stop it. If you try to regulate it in one country, they'll just do it in some other countries. The cat's out of the bag. So the best thing we can do, as opposed to trying to put the genie back in the bottle, which is a losing battle, is to accelerate it, but then also put a lot of effort into how do we help the people that are displaced. So how do you help the people that are displaced? You do retraining programs, you do education programs, you find, you set up programs to create new kinds of jobs. There are a million new kinds of jobs. There are people getting full-time uh, employment making unboxing videos on YouTube. Yeah. What? I've never heard of that before. And now you can make a full-time job of that. Or children, kids, who will play a video game while talking about something else, and they'll get huge followings. You can get a full-time job doing that. But you forgive get... me, though. Th th this problem is way bigger than that, though, isn't it? I mean, oh, we're talking I... tens, if not hundreds of millions of people. I know. But this is the tip of the iceberg of new kinds of jobs. There are people who can be life coaches for you or can come along and be basically a friend, and they get paid for it. Well, the who wants a friend? Um, okay, you want a huge industry? Let's talk about the demographic transition as we are aging as a planet and we need uh, assistive care in our old age. There will be robots that can do this. This is one of the things that Japan is investing heavily in. But, okay, some antisocial people want a robot doing it. But how many people want an actual human to be there with them? The demand is enormous. And do you have to have a PhD to be the person that holds your hands when you're, when you're sick and you're old? You do not. You need to be a human being. So these displaced people can do that. So like every revolution in history where 90% of the jobs go away, we create 90% of the jobs. The fear for me is not that. It's how fast it's happening. That's the danger. So in 1900, 97% of us were farmers, and 100 years later, 3% of us were farmers. Do we have 94% unemployment? Of course not. We all got retrained into new jobs. And most of us work in jobs that couldn't have even been imagined in 1900. So this will happen again. But it's not going to happen over a century. It's going to happen over a decade. It's the transition. That's it's the a transition. Issue. That's the, the problem. The speed of the transition. Yes. So what we need to be doing is putting real effort into creating organizations to help people through that transition. Also, Basic education is very important. In a lot of the world, um, learning English is a life changer. So maybe we should be helping them do that. In a lot of the world, basic literacy is a game changer. So we should be helping them do that. In a lot of the world, um, being trained to be able to work with people in, in service where you're working with people, like helping the elderly or taking your, your um, order at a, at a fast food place. Yeah. Robots are going to do all the cooking behind the scenes. That's going away. Those jobs are going away. But the person at the counter is not going to go away because people want people. Yes. Um, even for, for now. No, no, no. Well, people inherently. Okay. I mean, you, you see the self-service checkout things at the supermarkets. People are making that was alien at first, but people are making peace with those. People are also not making peace with those. True. Who? I'll be honest. When I see the ch self-checkout line that I could get through in 30 seconds and I see the line with the human that's a little bit longer, you know what I tend to go to? I often go to the line with the humor, human. Yeah. Um, if, if we're talking about diagnosing my diseases, I want a robot to do it because computers will do it better and they will, de they will detect my cancer before a human was. But when it comes to sitting across the table from me and saying, I'm sorry, Lehman, you have cancer, I want a human. I don't want a robot to do that. Yeah. I want a human. Yeah. So let the robot do all the medical stuff when it comes to operating on me, I want a robot. When it comes to talking to me about my upcoming operation, I want a human. Okay, do you understand there what I'm saying? There are human sides to, to jobs that, that robots will or can't replace. And it's the part that talks to the human. Yes. I don't want ChatGPT to discuss with me my upcoming surgery. I want a human being. And then I want a reinforcement learning system robot to do the, the to surgery. To do the procedure. Exactly. Do, do, you, think, do you think jobs yes. have to exist? I mean, 
Uh, we, we, we could uh, you, UBI. Yeah. Okay. Everyone talks about UBI. Maybe that's part of the solution. I don't know. There's downsides too. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, 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 not at uh, all. But no, that's no, always but... what people talk about, and, <coughs> and it probably is maybe a, I don't know. If, I don't know. Home, I don't know. do all the hard work. And I don't people know. get paid. Okay. But then it's almost like communism somehow, where people get paid. To, well, okay. Well, by the except, state. except communism in some sense can't work, and this maybe UBI works. I think. I. And maybe maybe something called UBI is part of the solution. I don't think it's the whole solution. The whole solution is that we crave doing things of significance. Yeah. So whether it's called a job and whether you're called being paid or not, it doesn't matter. And this is true of retirement too, especially with an aging population and longevity research. I want to do a, a first principles on longevity. You've got to have... We have to reach a point in your life where maybe you retire forever from paid work but you can't just sit in front of the TV for the next 20 years. It will destroy you. Yeah. You have to do something of significance. It does not have to be paid work. Meaning. It has to be meaning. Maybe you are doing volunteer with people that are suffering, or maybe you're doing volunteer with children, or maybe you're doing volunteer with animals. You have to do something of significance. We as human beings will die if we just spend the rest of our life on the golf course. And I hate yeah. to say it, but it is the truth. A lot of retired guys, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's almost a cliche. They retire from work. They, it's cliche. But the brain switches off and they yeah, come yeah, okay. back to their dead. Now, another thing that science has shown over and over again is that we just need human connection. Even more important than doing something of meaning is doing something where I connect with human being. Do you think the robots will get so good that they, that, that falls away? It's a real question. I think not, but it's a real question. Um, it is possible that, that future versions of ChatGPT aren't even smart enough that they know what they're saying, and they aren't even smart enough that I would start to think that they're intelligent, but they're smart enough to keep a company, or at least come, keep some people company. But I also think that at some level, we're eventually going to understand, you're not real. My dog is real, but you're not real. And, and there may be a, a time when that happens. Yeah, maybe we'll never get over that. Yeah, yeah. You can but maybe never... not. No. Maybe, maybe they'll be as smart as my dog and they'll be just as good a companion. But I'm, I'm skeptical. We'll see. I don't know. It's actually, a, I, I really don't know. Okay. Yeah. Something, that's rare, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah. Something that you said that really made me want to turn the cameras on is something that I, it's a, it's a misbelief that I had, which is I thought that AI can make AI smarter. Oh, yeah. And that isn't true, is it? Uh, not exactly. So it's true in a sense, but it's not really fundamentally true. So here's the, here's the thing that people say with the singularity. Because that's what's scary. AI making AI smarter. Um, well, I think it's pretty cool. But, but well, the, 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 the me, nightmare yeah. scenario. So what people have said is that if AI is smarter than people, then what it will be able to do is make an AI that is smarter than itself. And then that one will make an AI that's smarter than itself. And then you get this cycle. And the cycle will go through a million years of improvement in a night. And we'll wake up in the morning and our super overlords have now taken over and we're all pets. We can't even comprehend what they're saying. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. Um, so the, I won't say whether or not that scenario will ever happen, but the feedback cycle they're talking about isn't real. It is not the case that if you build an AI and I build an AI, whichever of us is smarter will have the better AI. That's not true. A, a better per if whichever of us is a little bit smarter, that doesn't mean that the AI we built is a little bit better. In fact, the history of AI has lots of dead ends. The very smart people have spent long times finding the dead ends. The way we've really improved AI is that we've just tried lots of things and see what works. And so maybe what we're going to get is AIs improve fast because we just have a whole bunch of them being tried in parallel. But it's not necessarily the case that we're going to have the feedback cycle that this AI is smarter, therefore it's going to build one that's smarter than itself, therefore it's going to build one that's smarter than itself. Just being smarter doesn't make you build a better AI. And so we're not going to wake up one morning and find that they're now a trillion times faster than they were last night. It's going to be more of they have to work in parallel and we just try a bunch in parallel and the better ones work. But then we don't have a trillion computers doing it, so again they don't become a trillion better times better overnight. So that's not really how it works. So yeah. What, what, you can make AI, AI oh. very specific, for very specific tasks. What if you give it the specific task of creating an, a better AI? Define better. Okay. okay. But also, um, how is it going to do it? Well, it has to use reinforcement learning. Well, it has to be trial, do trial and error, which means it has to try a lot of different ways, which means now we're back into the thing where it's exponentially hard to do. So the example I want to say is if you want to make a, draw a straight line with a pencil, having a straighter pencil doesn't help. Yeah. A crooked pencil is just as good as a straight pencil for drawing a straight line. 
And so a smart AI is not any better than a stupid AI for building a better AI. And a smart human is not better than a stupid human for building a better AI. I mean, there's, if you're too stupid, you can't. But it's, it's, yes, to, to a degree. Uh, but you can draw a straight line with a crooked pencil. And making your pencil straighter doesn't make your line any straighter. So, hey, okay, so how far can AI go then? Where, where ah, could it? There's the question. So, the real answer is we don't know. And when I say we, I mean all of humanity. There are some things that I am convinced AI is going to get better at and is going to accomplish in the very near future. And there are some very basic things that I don't know. Maybe it will and maybe it won't. And I, I am skeptical of anyone who thinks they do know. So what do I not, what do I, what do I think is really going to happen? I think you're going to find um, basically robots that get good at all the things that don't, don't involve language. Uh, and I think they're going to get good at very, very fast. So we were talking about building houses and being on assembly lines and doing mining. And I think uh, manning a factory, I think all of the um, staffing a factory, I think all of those things are going to uh, happen really fast. That these robots that are self-learning are going to learn how to do these tasks. It is extremely complicated to, um, to put a screw in with a screwdriver. But um, they're going to learn how to do that. They're going to learn how to do it very fast. And the thing that Alpha Zero, the G reinforcement learning with deep neural networks, is just going to do all these things incredibly fast. And the dojo that the Tesla built is going to make these things really fast. And they're going to get good incredibly fast. ChatGPT will get better, right? Generative AI for, for LLMs, uh, these large language models, they're going to get better. And they're going to, they're going to get better and go asymptotic to some amount of goodness. What is that level of goodness? I don't know. And neither does anyone else. There is a real sense in which ChatGPT4 doesn't understand what it's saying. And people would say, well, there's some sense in which it does understand what it's saying, but there's also a real sense in which it doesn't understand what it's saying. So will, will ChatGPT5 will, um, be, be able to do better? Will um, ChatGPT100 then be you know, 25 times better? I don't know. Maybe it's just fine-tuning some of the, rubbing off some of the, the rough spots and fine-tuning a little bit and that's it. Um, or maybe it'll have this some leap and it'll be you know, a superhuman intelligence. But we don't know. It is very possible that to really get there, you need to have an internal state and you need to have um, reinforcement learning and you need to have it building models of the world in a sense that the current one is not doing. There are some breakthroughs that we may need, and I have lots of ideas if I were doing research on it right now that I would like to explore, but I don't know if they're going to work. We just have to try them. That's why I was saying being smart doesn't help. You just have to try lots of things and see what works. Yeah. So who knows? It's going to be fun to watch. <laughs> Lehman, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Uh, so I'm reassured and interested and also a little bit concerned at the same time. <laughs> uh, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but it's just, uh, wow, what an opportunity. Thanks ever so much for watching. Thanks.